In this session, we are going to discuss about what is inline function and what are the advantages and disadvantages of inline function. Then in which situation we have to go for using this inline function. And then uh, what are the differences between inline function and macros? Basically, inline function is one optimization technique which is used by the compilers. And for that, we have to put what keyword? Inline keyword. Inline keyword suggests that the compiler substitute the code within the function definition in place of each call to that function. So basically, if this is a normal function, you can see here, this is the start, main function body, code, and this is the my function, code. Now, this my function, flow control transfer to this particular code of this function, then stop. But in the case of inline function, start, main function body, code, my function. So the function's body here inside the main function body of the function. Okay, then stop. So this is the difference between them. Here you can see the reference. Here you can see the body directly here. So in theory, using inline functions can make your program faster because they eliminate the overhead associated with function calls see now this portion is not here calling a function requires pushing the return address on the stake right one more thing means one more tax associated with respect to calling a function and that is what return address that should be pushed on the stack right then pushing arguments onto the stack then jumping to the function body and then executing a return instruction when the function finishes so this many operations needs to be done when a function call is performed so what you have seen pushing the return address on the stack pushing arguments onto the stack jumping to the function body executing a return instruction when the function finishes now this process is eliminated by inlining the function the compiler also has different opportunities to optimize functions expanded in line versus those that are not in line right a trade-off of inline function is that overall size of your program can increase well so you, uh, this this overhead being eliminated using this inline function but one direct uh, means impact you can see that the size of the overall size of the program may increase so let's have a look on the advantages of using inline function first it does not require functioning or function calling overhead right that is the main advantage of it that it does not require function calling overhead then it also saves overhead of variables push or pop onto the stack while function calling that already we have seen then it also saves overhead of return call from a function it increases locality of reference by utilizing instruction cache then after inlining the compiler can also apply inter-procedural optimization if specified, right? So after inlining, this one more optimization can be done. What is that? Inter-procedural optimization. Now, this is the most important one. In this way, compiler can now focus on the date code elimination and can give more stress on branch prediction, induction variable eliminations, and so many of them. So it helps in the both optimization process got it so advantages first we have got function calling overhead is not required saves overhead of variable push up also pop on to the stack while function calling saves overhead of return call from a function then increases locality of reference utilizing instruction code then again it actually helps in the case of interprocedural optimization then of course there are some disadvantages of using inline function. First, we already got to know that it may increase function size so that it may not fit on the cache, causing loss of cache mitch. Right, so cache mitch may occur. 
because it increases the function side, so it may not fit on the cache. Then after inlining function, if variables number which are going to use register increases, then they may create overhead on the register variable resource utilization. You got it now. So inlining means that function directly from our current main function, right? So it, it will actually imply what use of the register increases, right? So that may again create overhead of register variable resource utilization. Third, it may cause compilation overhead if somebody changes the code inside the inline function, then all calling location will also be compiled. Got it now? So compilation overhead may also be possible in this case only when somebody changes the code inside the inline function because in that case, all calling location will also be compiled. Then if using header file, it will make the header file size larger and may also make it unreadable. Then if somebody used too many inline functions resulting in a larger code size, then it may cause scratching in memory also and more and more number of pages fault bringing down the overall program performance. So the limitation is there that you should not go for too many inline functions. Right. Otherwise, it will increase the larger code size that as a result may cause stretching in the memory. So bring a lot of space balls. And also it is not recommended for embedded system where large binary size is not preferred at all due to the memory size constraint. So these are the disadvantages. At least you should remember that because of the inline function, overall function size may increase, so it may not fit on the cache. So as a result, it may cause a lot of cache miss. Then register uh, variable resource utilization. There we may have some overhead. Then if uh, some changes is done inside the inline function, Compilation of it is also possible in the such cases. Then if using header file, then header file size becomes large, make it unreadable. If you use too many inline function, then larger code size will um, means what will result some kind of memory crashing, right? Then it is also not recommended to use in embedded system. Now after advantages and disadvantages, Let's take an example of inline function. See, this is the class account. Class, we all know in C++, right? A kind of blueprint from where we instantiate objects. Now, inside this class, we are using this. I hope you all know about the constructors, right? Account double initial balance. Balance, this variable being uh, means, uh, <coughs> assigned a value of this particular parameter, initial balance. Okay, then double get balance constant, then double deposit, double amount, then double withdraw double amount. These are the uh, uh, means we are using here as the double. And private, under private, we have defined this variable balance. Now, in line double account, scope resolution operator get balance constant, return balance. In line double account deposit, the bull amount, then balance is added by what? Balance plus amount, return balance. So in line double account, withdraw double amount, then balance will be deducted, right? With that amount, return balance. So here you can see that we using this keyword in line, we try to make these functions, what? In line, and now in the main class, you can see this is the, uh, particular get balance, deposit, and uh, withdraw. These three are main functions, and we have made them in line and defining this particular uh, means this where to perform the in line or not. Now, it is usually means uh, used for the small functions, see, because these are not a big function, right? So, in these cases, using inline is okay. 
But if the lines of code increases, it means to say the function size increases, then it is not recommended to go for inline function. Because in such cases, uh, means instead of optimization, actually that makes the performance of the code a little bit slower. Now, so we have to come to this conclusion that when to use inline function. So inline functions are best used for small functions, such as those that provide access to data members only. Because you can see here, we are just using this inline function just to access these values, variables, right? Short functions are sensitive to overhead of the function calls, but longer functions spend proportionately less time in the calling and returning sequence and benefit less from inlining. So you should not go for inline function if the function side is, I mean, uh, big. Well, you got it when to use inline function. Now let's come to the final uh, point of discussion in this class. That is, what are the differences between inline and macro in C++? Now an inline function we define by inline keyword while uh, macros are defined by the keyword defined, has defined, right? Now for inline functions, the class data members can be accessed, whereas macro cannot access the class data member. Remember, macro cannot access the class data member. Now in the case of inline function, the program can be easily debugged. Right, debugging is okay. Means debugging is uh, not a complex task in case of inline function. But in the case of macros, the program, the program cannot be easily debugged. Then in the case of inline, the arguments are evaluated only once. While in the case of macro, the arguments are evaluated every time when the macro is used in the program. Then in C++, Inline may be defined either inside the class or outside the class. You have seen that we have defined the inline function outside the class also in the very example I have shown, right? Sorry. Then in case of macro, whereas in case of macro, all the time defined at the beginning of the program. We have to define macro at the beginning of the program. Then in C++, inside the class, the short length functions are automatically made the inline function. So remember, if the functions length are short, then they are automatically met inline function while the macro is specifically defined. Well, inline is not as widely used as macros, but we this use this macro frequently because uh, you know the advantages of macro, right? Inline sometimes because of uh, its nature that it may increase the code size. So we not do not go for inline in a frequent manner, right? Inline is not used in competitive programming while macro is very much used in the case of competitive programming. Inline function is terminated by the curly brace at the end while the macro is not terminated by any symbol. It is terminated by a new line. So inline can be terminated with curly brace while macro with the help of a new line. So these are the differences between inline function and macro. I hope it is clear to you. Still, if any uh, doubt exists, then don't forget to ask me. So with this, I'm ending this session. Thank you. Bye-bye.